Hi guys, and welcome to the Jesus Girl Diancy podcast. My name is Shaniqua Robinson, and I will be your host. Hi, 伙计们，欢迎来到 Jesus Girl Multi-Generational International. 我叫 Shaniqua Robinson， 我会成为你的主人。Hola chicos y bienvenidos a jesusgirl.en podcast. Mi nombre es Sanicua Robinson y seré su anfitrión. Hallo Jungs und willkommen bei jesusgirl.en podcast. Mein Name ist Sanicua Robinson und ich werde dein Gastgeber sein. Salut les gars et bienvenue sur jesusgirl.en podcast. Je m'appelle Sanicua Robinson et je serai votre hôte. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. Now, let's get into the message. Now, let's get into the message. In life, you have two options: you can either learn from your past and grow, or be overcome by defeat. Introducing our newest season, entitled "I Conquered It." This season will highlight the lives of men and women of God that have some treacherous situations that God gave them the ability to not only overcome, but to. Now、oh, let's get into、Jesus、the message. Push, you don't hear people talk about sin, sick, sin. I've never heard that before, you know. Sin, sick. Okay, sin, sick. it's when okay. you have given yourself over to sin. Right. Feel nauseous, like your body、oh、feels nauseous. Yes. Wow. Because you're disgusted by the sin that you gave yourself over to. I have been、right, okay. featuring、so、special guests, Truth Be Told, aka Sister Raya, from the United or, Kingdom. Do you ignore that and just move in who you actually are? Younger, yes, sir. 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 So much more than their own private thoughts towards you. See the one who woke you up this morning, yeah, is the same one who has called you, and whose breath's the one that formed you, who causes you to be yourself and just you. When you start to recognize and realize your life won't be the same, yeah, go ahead and ask me why. You're a walking testimony, not just you though. Cause so am I. Not one of us is perfect, but we grow in day by day. Understand this: we have been given life. Yeah, you and I've been given life, and life much more abundantly. Yeah, that's life much more abundantly. If you receive that for yourself, you won't walk the same. Why? Cause there will be an inner smile. Yeah, there will be an inner smile. Yeah. Cause as for me and my house, yeah. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will continue to lift praises to the Most High, yeah. Ask me why? Cause I'm thankful. That's why. I'm thankful to be here. His breath is what keeps me in motion, in motion, in motion, in motion. I'm thankful to be here. My very existence is a blessing, is a blessing, is a blessing, is a blessing. Not to myself, but to others. Not to myself. But to others, and you are included. Yes, you are included, and you are included. Yes, you are included. Yeah, walking abundant life. This is a different high. Walking abundant life. This is a different high, yeah. Walking abundant life, hey. This is a different high, yeah. Walking abundant life, hey. This is a different high, a different high, yeah. A different high, yeah. A different high, yeah. A different high, hey. 
This is a different high Now, let's get into the message we are now streaming and so hi guys welcome to the jesus girl ENT podcast uh, with featuring sis israel from the united hey. kingdom we are so excited to be with you guys she's not youtube new to the po the podcast this is our a word from this generation segment where we kind of talk about some topics and some things that are going on in the world and from a um, biblical perspective a christian perspective and so sis Israel, um just for those who are not familiar with who you are do you want to go ahead and plug yourself <laughs> who um, are you? what do you do um how can we find you on social media Hey everybody, um, I am Azraya, or I also go by Truth Be Told. Um, I do spoken word, but I do have a podcast as well. Um, if you want to find it, um, it's called Going Deeper With Truth. Mm -hmm. And you'll find it on Spotify at the moment. Um, it's only on Spotify at the minute. Um, it's not always going to be that way, but that's where it's at at the moment. Um, if you want to, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. That is good, sis is right. You know what? Don't feel bad that it's only on Spotify because I just, um, you know, I podcast all the time. I'm in an interview ser series right now entitled I Conquered It. And I just was looking on some of the platforms that extended offers for me to be on that platforms and I didn't see my podcast. So I have to go back to some of those platforms and like, hey, what happened? Where is it? <laughs> so don't yeah. feel bad that it's not on all of those different platforms because it's a lot of maintenance with keeping up with all of that. And so, yeah. um, you know what David had one smooth stone and, de and defeated Goliath so if you got one you go. boom <laughs> you can still complete your assignment so do you want to start with your questions or do you want me to start uh, with mine I can start I don't mind okay. um, go ahead okay so my question is do you remember a time that you came through something and at the time it didn't look like it and it didn't feel like it it didn't feel like you could come through it Yes. You did come through. And at what point did you realize that it wasn't you? Yes, I do remember a time. Um, actually, I'll, I'll talk about when I was young, younger. And so in my youth, um, this is all in my book, How I Got Over, um, Volume 1 Before the Call. But in my youth, I, I dealt with a lot. I dealt with a lot. And... Um, um, there was a point in time that I was experiencing, you know, some things with my stepdad. He was a bit um, aggressive, a bit abusive. And then on top of that, I was small. And then I transitioned to a new school and I was trying to, you know, find my way, find my niche. And I just could not, you know, make friends. I just wasn't having a good, good time at making friends. I probably had like one or two. And I remember that time um, in my life feeling like I was defeated because I didn't have really peace at home. And then I didn't have peace at school. So I kind of felt like, where am I supposed to go? Where do I belong? I felt like I didn't belong. And um, it was a very, very hard place for me. I was very saddened by the experience. But you know what? I made it through. God ended up making a way for me to go live with my grandmother. And when I lived with my grandmother, um, she loved me unconditionally. It was almost like I was her only child because it was she and I. And she had a very large home and she worked. She was still working. So she started to provide for me. And then I started to get good friends. So I made it through it. But it was a very hard patch. Thank you. Okay. Hey. I'm convinced at this point that Nyla just wants to be the star of the show. I love this because, guess. <laughs> <laughs> because every time either I'm doing a podcast or if I'm doing like an interview like this, she always has to make a guest appearance. So <laughs> Nyla just is she's a part of the team now. So yes. this is gonna lead me to my first question for you. So yeah, um youth was a hard time for me. Not all yeah. of you because that was before I got into boxing. That was before I started um, dancing and um, getting into the studio and singing, um, displaying yeah. my gifts. So 
Um, once I got into my gifts, once I started staying with my grandma, once I got into my purpose, doing the things that I do well, then things got better for me. So, yeah, um, yeah that's encouragement for somebody who's going through that um, experience. And if you want to know more about that, uh, shameless plug, how I got over volume one for the call, go read that book from Amazon. Okay, so this is going to take me to my questions for you. Okay. I should have had it pulled up already. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. Do you consider, because I'm in the season entitled I Conquered It, and I'm trying my best to convey to the audience, because God gave me the word, I'm trying my best to convey to the audience what a conqueror is, because they may hear me saying it because I'm more so soft-spoken. It's like, mm. <laughs> when you hear conqueror, it sounds like, mm. like it doesn't sound like, raw because yeah. what a conqueror is is where you you know you defeat giants you defeat those at war so um if you could do you consider yourself to be a conqueror me personally yeah um you know what like i think um to answer the question like when i look back and think about um some of the things that i've come through myself like definitely um i wouldn't i wouldn't even say it. this is gonna, i don't know how this is gonna <laughs> i would not say that i'm a conqueror i'd say that definitely more than not because of me though but the word I mean? yeah, yeah yeah go not, ahead not, girl, not, not, preach more than because yeah you know what i mean like and that's the thing like because like yeah i might be skilled in an area or i might be like good at this or good at that but it doesn't mean that Oh, because I'm good at that thing, then that's me done. Because if it was that, then yeah, I am a conqueror. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's and it's not to me like a conqueror is not what's on show, like it, externally or whatever. What you can see or what other people can see and stuff like that. It is that quiet. You know when someone says like someone's quiet, they have like a quiet confidence. It's that it's the in, inner thing. Like you can't see it, and it's not yeah. obvious. You know what I mean? Wow, that is good. <laughs> that is That's how good. I think it. Yeah. So I'm I not love that. <laughs> I love that. That was powerful. It let it added some more perspective to it. It's more than a conqueror, according to the word of God, of course. And then it's not something that you naturally see. So you can't look at a person and know this person is going to defeat, you know, some some Thank obstacles you. or the things that are set yeah. up against them. <laughs> Actually. In hindsight, I believe that God uses the underdogs most often, the people that you would least expect it to be able 100%. to do something of that magnitude, where you got David, you got Esther, you got Samson. It's like the element of surprise. Like I never yeah. saw it coming. <laughs> yep, exactly. I did not exactly. think that person was going to do yep. that. They just came from the you know left field, or they came yep. out of nowhere. So I love that. Yep. And so um, this is going to lead us to your next question. Okay, cool. So my next question is: um, Do you realize that you are change, your miracle, and you are breakthrough? And how do you remind yourself of that? That I am a change, a miracle, and a breakthrough. Yes. That I am those things. Yes. Do you realize that you are, number one? And two, how do you remind yourself that you actually are? Wow. Um, <clears throat> I do realize that I have changed, that um, God has done some miraculous things in my life and that I have broken through. Now, this is something that I want to share because we're in this season of conquering. Hold on. Yeah. Get my charger before it dies. Oh, yeah. No <laughs> So do I realize that I am a miracle, um, a miracle, wait, 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 say it again, a change, a miracle and a breakthrough and a breakthrough. And so I realized that God has, um, performed a change in my life. I realized that he has done miraculous things and, um, he has given me more multiple breakthroughs so yeah. this is a thing when it comes down to breakthrough it's not like one and done so yeah. i got a breakthrough and i don't ever need one again <laughs> like <laughs> um, it doesn't work like that there are different stages to breakthrough so i may have struggled in one area and then once i broke through out of that because god 
elevated me, now I need more breakthrough. And so the more I go deeper in the things of God and the more he advances me forward, the more breakthrough I do see. And so um, just one testament to God's mir miracle work and power is that um, in that course of time that I was experiencing like physical abuse um, from my step parent, as well as um, being um, isolated, it, um, with my peers, people not really understanding why I was behaving the way that I was because I was dealing with what I was dealing with at home. Um, mm -hmm. I was suicidal. And so a lot of people are not aware of that. And um, the reason that I know that I am, I have been changed because mm -hmm. I have never attempted to commit suicide again since I came into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, I have never self-harmed again. Um, he just completely gave me breakthrough. And so I got my scars. I don't know if they can see those, but those little lines on my wrist, that mm -hmm. is my, those are my scars. Those are my proof <laughs> from mm -hmm. my experience. And I yeah. um, questioned when I got saved, why I needed them. But that's because there may be somebody else that is experiencing that that may feel like they're alone and when you show them just like jesus showed his handprints and the wound from his side that i'm no longer there then yep. they can believe because they overcome we are overcome by the word of our by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and though mm -hmm. i thought that i should end my life at the age of 13 or 14 years old like i was so young i was still a baby so yeah. at 13 or 14, I felt like I should end my life. God's God's will for my life, purpose for my life overrode what I <laughs> wanted for myself. And yeah. I have changed <laughs> a lot. I'm not angry like I used to be. I used to be so angry because I was so hurt and yeah. I've experienced um, miracle signs and wonders. And he has given me breakthrough. So, yes. Amen. Do you have anything you want to add or ask to that? Because you are the interviewer. So we are like doing a cross interview. Um, so the other bit was, well, you kind of answered it in one, I guess. But like, um, it was at what point did you realize that? I don't know. More than that. Sorry, it was how do you remind yourself? How do I remind myself? Now. Now? Right. I have to have reflective moments and that's why I tell others because sometimes you will be like just like the children of Israel they went through they saw God part the Red Sea like that yeah. we say it all the time so it seems like something common but that's mm. not normal <laughs> yeah. that's miraculous they yeah. saw him do that and then they got into the wilderness and act like they like they didn't know who he was and so I have to reflect back on those moments where God parted the Red Sea for me, where he yeah. allowed for me to walk over on dry ground to start, you know, to start to embrace who I was in him. Because it was really purpose that saved mm -hmm. my life. Purpose yeah. saved my life. It was God plus purpose that saved my life. That's why I always pray and we always say that you were born on purpose for a purpose because prior to me knowing I was gifted or knowing I was capable of doing these other things and being put in those arenas to do those other things, I felt yeah. like I had no reason to live. Like, why am I here? Like, I, right. I feel like I didn't have a purpose. And then when I started to excel in my purpose, it brought forth friends, it brought forth it may not have been the ones that i thought i needed but it was the ones mm -hmm. that i loved like the ones that came yeah. around they, they were like so cool so loving so down to earth i was grateful for them so it mm. brought forth purpose it brought forth um it, it brought forth friends it brought forth confidence because i began to build myself up and so how i remind myself is i look back Cause mm -hmm. even now, that's why when you talk about breakthrough, there's levels to breakthrough. Even now, yep. God is breaking me into another arena. I'm going to another place. What I'm talking about now, this is reflective from over 17 years ago, 18 years ago. And you know, this is something I'm reflecting on God allowing me to conquer because many people don't know that about my story. And so mm -hmm. they may think, oh, well, you know, they judge me by other things, but they don't even know what God really brought me out of, like what he really delivered me from is so right. 
And so I, I remind myself of this when I reflect on like where he brought me not all i don't have to go all the way back that far sometimes i can just reflect on what he's done in the last week the last yeah. week, the last day like yesterday was a hard yeah. day i didn't even feel like i can get up but look at me now hair combed <laughs> <laughs> we're on here so sometimes it's just reflecting it's reflecting yeah, it what he's done yeah cool thank you all right so this is going to lead me to my next question for you yeah what are some challenges you face with moving forward? So even yeah. from now, since it's right here from where you like, the reason I, I love the glasses because it gives journalists. <laughs> like it's hey, giving, hey, <laughs> it's it's giving journalists. <laughs> and I love that. I love that for you. I love that for you. Oh, and so goodness. even like from the first time that we started doing these interviews, international interviews to today, yeah. It's like, okay, like I, I can see your growth and, you know, what God is doing in you. And so what are some of the challenges that you find yourself facing right now, now that you are moving forward? Um, that's a, sorry, that's a good question, but I think, you know what it is? I think even, I know it's, I'm still- and, Opposed to trusting God, because that's where it really comes down to is trust yeah. and having faith that if yeah. he told you to do this, if he brought you to it, he's going to bring it through. And I and I'll tell you this, because sometimes people battle with did God tell me to do this? He loves mm -hmm. us too much to allow yeah. us to continue to do something that's not producing righteous fruit. He will shut the operation down, just like with the Tower yeah. of Babel. They really should have been thanking God. <laughs> Because they worked <laughs> hard to build that tower all the way up. They worked hard. So they really should have been thanking God that in the process of them building that thing up, he shut it down so they wouldn't have to keep on exhausting their energy trying to do something that he never ordained for them to do. And so exactly. that is something I know to be true as well, that if something is not of God, God will shut it down. He has no issue with shutting it down. Like, for instance, my son... Nathan, he builds, he likes to use Legos to build. And yep. he's been doing this for probably like two or three years. And sometimes when I'm walking by, not intentionally, but I can accidentally knock one of his towers over because I'm not paying attention. And yeah. what he would say is, my build, my build. <laughs> That's what he used to say. <laughs> and I didn't understand what he was saying. So I asked my daughter, Alessa, Alessa, what is he saying? And she she said he's saying my build, my build, because he built it up and it took so long for him to build it and then I just knocked it over without a yep. care. Now, of course I have I have compassion so I help him restore it. But mm -hmm. that is the thing about God. If something is not even though I might yell out, well God, it took me a long time to build this. Um it took me a long time to build this. If he's not at the center of it because he's a jealous God, if it's yep. not promoting his kingdom, if it's not something that's going to um bring forth righteous fruit, he'll shut it down. Without, yeah. he'll kick it over and i could be crying my bill my bill and then next thing i know i look to the left or the right and he's giving me new <laughs> equipment to work on what it is that he now do what i called you to do now exactly. do i predestined for you to do so yeah that's that on that so um i yeah i thank you for answering that question and i think other people can resonate with that that some of the challenges with moving forward is feeling like this isn't working like what is this doing what is it profiting and so the sun it up if god called you to it don't stop just because you don't see results because yeah. those will come yeah. but if he didn't call you to it and you have a true relationship with him and a true prayer life he's gonna shut it down so you can be yeah. you can rest assured that he's not going to allow you to continue to do something that he has not called or predestined for you to do yeah definitely yeah. okay so i think this leads us to your next question for me yeah um so i actually yeah, this this is a question for you. So, how do you apply your faith um, in your day to day? Like, my faith to my day to day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, how faith, do you apply? my faith is my day to day. It is. Um, I who I am in God is not is not a front. It's not because is He is my IV. You know how you go to mm -hmm. the hospital and they put an IV in yeah. your arm my oxygen yeah everything 
So my day to day life, like, OK, he does give me a little leeway where sometimes I watch funny videos, something that's funny, like somebody fail or something like that. He gave me a little leeway to just, you know, have fun. But yeah. he has given such a structure, guidance for what he keeps me out of and what he keeps me from participating in. And I can always tell if God is like, no, you cannot watch this. You cannot listen to this. You cannot mm -hmm. hang out with these people. You cannot go to this place. And so yeah. when the scripture says that led by the spirit of God, as many are as the children of God are led by the spirit of God. That is my heart posture. I truly do believe that because my entire day is filled with the word of God. If I'm not yeah. listening to the word of God, if I'm not studying the word of God, of course, I have to do my studies for college and take care yeah. of my responsibilities. But that's how mm -hmm. I apply my faith every single day. And my faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith is the substance of things uh, unseen and evident substance of things hoped for and evidence of things unseen. And so mm -hmm. in, in substance of things hoped for and evidence of things unseen. And so I'm walking out my faith every day. This is faith. <laughs> this is faith because yeah. it was never um, Jesus girl. ENT was not into it wasn't into existence. It was an idea, but I knew it was a God breathed idea so much so that I protected it. I guarded it. And this is something too. going back to your last question. Sometimes that doubt will creep in because of the opinions you allow others to give pertaining to your God given assignment. Come yeah. on here. Sometimes yeah. that doubt will creep in because of the opinions you allow others to give pertaining to your God given assignment. If God yeah. gave it to you, then he's going to instruct you through just like with knowing the art going back to that example, because we don't have to jump all over the place. If Noah yeah. would have got advice from his wife or from his sons or from anyone who was getting ready to perish in a flood, many of yeah. them would have talked him out of it. But because he had yeah. heard from God, he knew that in order for me to build this um, effectively and mm -hmm. do it and, and get the results that I desire, I have to listen to the one who gave it to me. And so this is faith because God was telling me and is still telling me step by step what to do, how to apply it. And the most important part for it to be effective, anyone who's doing a guy led business ministry or anything of that nature is you have to be right. You have to be right and in right standing with God. And the more that you are in right righteousness and right standing with God, the more he will expand you. So it's not just God expanding your business or your brand. It's God expanding you. So yeah. the more you allow him to purify you, to cleanse you, yeah. to um, deliver you in those areas that you need deliverance, to bring forth that breakthrough that you need. The more that we allow him to do that, the more we can continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. I know sometimes I add because it's just so much that um, mm -hmm. questions are not just some questions are just not one one state. Right. It's, a, yeah. it's a little bit more expansive. <laughs> yeah. And so um, that was your next question for me. So is it my time for the next question for you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you notice your crowd change or decrease in size when you began to want more out of life? Huh, yes. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. Thousand percent. Yeah, I did. I have. And I do. Yeah. So how did you deal with that? Um, if I'm being honest, initially, I was trying to hold on to. Yes. Certain groups of people, not even groups. Well, yeah, groups of people and people and stuff. And um, I was getting like annoyed, like thinking, what's, like, what's the problem? Like, I don't understand. Like, trying to like, like lean on my own understanding and try and figure it out. Like, what's going on? What is it? Could it be this? Maybe it's this. Da, da, da. None of those things. You know what I mean? And um, then finally, after some time, when it hit, I was like, okay, obviously, that's it. We're not supposed to be continuing on. It's nothing on them or me. It's just that's what it is. Yeah. And, um, and that's it. It's not, it doesn't mean that they're bad people or, you know, whatever. It's just, that's, it's done. You know yeah. what I mean? New, new phase kind of thing. And then, like, yeah. So, yeah, definitely I've noticed the change. I love yeah. that. And you said, <laughs> it's just, it's done. It's not, it's not them. It's not me. It's just, yeah. it's done. 
and I tried yeah. to hold on. And that's how we are because that has for this newest season, this newest level of breakthrough has been the hardest part for me. It's just mm -hmm. like when baby leaves their mother's womb and yeah. they cry. They they may be crying because it's a new experience, but they also may be crying. We don't know because we can't ask a baby to tell us directly unless God explains mm -hmm. it to us, you know. But we yeah. don't we may be crying because I just left an environment that I was comfortable in. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking at stuff I've never seen before, people I've never seen before. I know her because I, you know, know her voice, the mother, but yeah. everyone else is new. And so that is how it is for us when God expands us and takes us to new coast because mm -hmm. you want to hold on like that umbilical cord. You want to hold on to what you knew. My friend group. Um, touch it. Touch yeah. It. Yeah, come on, sister. Oh. Say what you're saying. <laughs> you're attached. Do you know what I mean? You need to, to like, yeah, it needs to be, you need to separate. So, yeah, yeah, you two attached. And sometimes God brings forth that separation because of idolatry. That's just the, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, because sometimes we make idols out of people. And yeah. those are the relationships that are the hardest to get over it, it breaks yeah. your heart because this was your idol and it's not yeah. you don't even realize that it was an idol like yeah. um but god has to stop it because he doesn't want you to make a god out of that person opposed yeah. to only having him as your lord and savior and if mm -hmm. now there are instances where if you correct it and you get it right then he may restore that relationship but yeah. if you continue to put that person on a pedestal above God, then he eliminates it. And so it does hurt. It is heartbreaking. And I was thinking about this this week. I'm glad we're talking about this with the relationship between Lot and Abraham. And mm. so God told Abraham to leave his father's house and his kindred and to go where he would call him. And mm -hmm. he took his wife and he took Lot and he took a few others. But mm. these are the two that we have really have Dane and category for. Lot was his nephew and Sarai, Sarai, who was later named Sarah, was his wife. Mm -hmm. And so in that situation, because and I, I really have to question, did was he supposed to leave Lot? Because all of the time while Lot was with him, he was causing problems. It's, it's like it's not one it's, segment. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, not one segment where it talks about light actually did something good. <laughs> exactly. It was, it was taken away. It was, it was too much of a weight kind of thing. Right? I mean, like, yes. Was, and in those kind of situations, and Miss Nita just said this on her interview In these kind of situations, God brings forth the separation. So yeah. could it could be that he had to send light to Sodom and Gomorrah. Or allow yeah. Lot to go to Sodom and Gomorrah because he knew that Abraham didn't have heart enough to leave him behind. He probably had stayed so attached to him because he felt like I left everything, everybody already. I don't want to leave Lot. Like Lot yeah. is the only remaining, aside from Sarah, Sarai, he's yeah. the only remaining um piece of remembrance from where I come from. So he held mm -hmm. on to him. But Lot tried to take all the land. Lot then went over. This not the second, this is the second time Lot went somewhere and Abraham had to come and save him. So just imagine if Lot would have stayed around because his heart wasn't after God. His heart was after yeah. other things. Abraham yeah. would have constantly been saving him, pulling him out of stuff, and it would have been pulling him away from his purpose. And then <laughs> Lot was also a space holder because yeah. God promised promised Abraham a son and Isaac, but Lot was kind of in that slot. You know what I mean? So this can help us with moving forward too with the separation of the crowd, with the decreasing of the crowd, is that mm -hmm. with the people that we try to bring along, some people don't qualify for your next level. And Lot right. was exemplifying that I can't handle where God is taking you. Because if I could handle it, I wouldn't be causing you problems all the time. You wouldn't be have to be here, there, everywhere, trying to clean up my mess, trying to fix something that I did. You will be able to flow in your purpose and I will be accommodating you. Ooh, come yeah. on here. That's why he yeah. didn't have to get rid of Sarah. Because Sarah yeah. didn't make it. You know, she, 
<laughs> they all were showing signs that they came from ungodly background because Sarah should never even recommend it Hagar as a spouse right. that she yeah. should just never ever done that <laughs> and you know what just talking about this reminds me of like it wasn't that long ago so maybe like a few months ago but uh, there was someone I was friends with and we've been friends for quite a little while maybe a few years not like mm -hmm. old, but enough to be like your friend you know a close yeah. friend sort of thing. And um, we had just like one little disagreement, very like minor thing. Like it was just, it was so tiny. Mm -hmm. um, but the response that I got back off the back of that uh, just threw me because it was like, it sounded like there was a lot more that was bit like that was being shared. And, yes. I was like, and I was like, where is this coming from? This is, I think this can't be about this. There's yeah. other stuff I don't even know about because it was like, it was so like, it just threw me. And I was like, what's going on? And where is this coming from? This is, I think this can't be about this. There's yeah. other stuff I don't even know about because it was like, it was so like, it just threw me and I was like, what's going on? And and to be honest, I didn't know how to respond. So I literally just, I just, I just withdrew and that was it. Not spoken to them again, basically. And like, that was the was best crazy. thing for you to do, sis Azariah, was to withdraw because God mm -hmm. will loose the tongue of somebody. I had that happen to me before. I have that happen to me multiple times where God will lose yeah. someone's tongue and they'll begin to say stuff and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I had no idea yeah. you felt this way. Yeah. It'll yeah. be so shocking. It's almost oh. heartbreaking. Oh. Like, yeah, I was like, are you joking? Like, I, yeah, I didn't know what to say. I <laughs> I'm trying to plug up my so I don't oh, back again. I had no idea. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Technology. Yeah, I we mm -hmm. love it, but we got like a love hate relationship because they be causing us some problems sometimes. But I had that to happen to me recently too with my mm. cousin. Now I'm telling you about my cousin. <laughs> 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 no, seriously, I had it happen with my cousin. There was a minor disagreement. And I mean, when I tell you, sis, she said so much stuff. Mm. I was like, oh my gosh. And I had not seen this girl. <laughs> and so many years and so yeah. many years i'm like i haven't seen you probably in 10 years maybe over 10 years and yeah. they had so many negative things to say about who they thought i was because yeah. they know about my change like we just yeah. talked about about the miracle god performed in my life about the breakthroughs that i have endured and mm -hmm. i was i was i was not sad at first i was angry <laughs> Right, yeah. Because you're thinking, what's going on? I was upset. You say this to me. I brought it up recently to my mom. I brought it up again to my dad. I mean, my, my brother. I said, you know what? I think I'm going to have to get over this. But I was so shocked. Yeah. yeah. That, that came out. Of, but you know what, Sister Zariah, pay attention to when people get to speaking and you're like, this is where is this coming from? Because right. yes. whatever's in your heart, is going to come out of your mouth. 100%. And when people start flowing like that and they yeah. can't stop themselves, mm -hmm. you don't stop them either. No. Let them speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If just like Cain and Abel, Abel yep. had to have some signs that Cain hated him. You know what I mean? They're yeah. brothers. So there was some indication that mm. somewhere in there that you have an odd against me. But for whatever reason, I overlooked your little jokes. Your little yeah. fears. Like, think the Lion King with Scar mm -hmm. and um Scar and Mufasa. So yeah. Scar would always say things that indicated he wanted the throne. He would always yeah. say things that indicated he wanted to take Mufasa out. It's not like finding out he did it was a shocker. Right. <laughs> because he already yeah. said it subtly yeah. so yeah, when yeah, yeah. you start saying things like that you gotta thank god mm. thank you jesus he yeah. let you say that to me like yeah. i may be hurt that you said that but i thank god that you said that because i would have never thought of all people you it's just like when they do those mystery uh case solving things to find yeah. out who was responsible mm -hmm. for the crime like sister Sally, I would have never. <laughs> I would have thought you. 
Of all people. <laughs> of all people. But yeah. something happened and Sister Sally held on to it. And then mm -hmm. she finally ended up seeing you. You know, she figured this is my moment. That's all the enemy yeah. needs is offense. He needs yeah, a little small offense. And it's a crack in the door. And he'll yeah. come to you. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. this was really, really good. I'm glad we're having this discussion. Because people think mm -hmm. that just because you're going forth in the things of God, you don't got things to go through. Yeah, oh yeah. No, you, def you definitely do. Ooh. You know what I mean? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right, our co-host. She she wants to be involved in questions. I'm sorry, Nyla. We're not asking you no questions. <laughs> we're not asking. We're not including you in the broadcast. Okay, I'm gonna take a minute, Sisters Ryan. Go ahead okay. and plug your podcast. Tell tell people more about your podcast. What you talk about on there and everything. Um, okay, so my podcast is um it's called Going Deeper with Truth. And it's to be honest, it's basically about looking um beyond the surface. So when I say surface, I mean looking beyond the external, like what you see outwardly, you know, that like looking beyond that and going deeper with the root of a thing, you know. You know, in the world of society, the focus is all about the external and the outward appearance surface level, you know, that kind of thing. That's what the focus seems to be. Um, so the podcast is really like taking taking off those layers and actually getting to the root of it, like looking beyond. And if you've ever listened to it, it really does make you um, self-examine your own self, to be honest. Like that's, that's the whole thing. It's a self-examination thing. Uh, and it makes you think about things that you may not have even thought about, or maybe you have, but you haven't really delved like deeper with it. Um, and so that's what it's about. Um, yeah, so check it. If you haven't checked it out already, please check it out if you would like to. Um, even if you just listen to one episode or a few, you know, I don't know, not going to say 30 seconds, maybe like a minute or two minutes of it, see what you think of it. You know, if, if it's for you, if it's for you, you're going to stay listening to it. If it's not, then that's cool as well. But yeah, just check it out. Going deeper with you. And it's on Spotify at the moment. That's all it's on. You won't find it anywhere else. But yeah, there's um, three seasons. So we're on season three at the minute. If you want to go back and start from the beginning, you can do. If you want to start from season um, two or the current season, season three, you can do. Um, but yeah, check it out. And yeah, see what you think of it. That's it. Okay, I'm back. That was good timing. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you take oh, it away. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So we talked about did your crowd change? So those who are listening in, when God starts to elevate you and promote you, your crowd may change. Be encouraged. Don't be discouraged because you mm -hmm. want him to do that. You want him to do. If God will eliminate the Judas out of your bunch, let him do it. Yeah. Let him do it. You may not understand it initially, but... It's going to stop you from having unnecessary pain, unnecessary pain and hardship later down the line. So and also, sorry, just to add, it also could be to do with it could be something as lo as, sim as uh, small as you misplacing something where you've got contact details for people that he doesn't want. You do you get what I'm trying to say? Oh, I think your camera went out. This is right. Oh, hello. Yeah, I can still hear you, but I can't see you anymore. Okay, oh, I, um, I love the glasses and the hair <laughs> like that. It is giving journalists. Like, we got to get to a background that looks like a news reporter. <laughs> you know what? There's something funny about what you said about that. The journalist thing, you know. Seriously. Really? Why? Because, so, when I went to university, I studied law, right? Mm -hmm. I chose law. But um, since college, it was either going to be, I did want to do, I wanted to do journalism. So I was either going to do journalism or law. Mm -hmm. And I ended up doing the le the law, but yeah, it's just funny that you say that because I, really? I was big in media. Yeah, I was. I think I was you can do both. So you graduated with a degree in law. Yeah, but that was like ages ago. <laughs> Still but valid. I, but I was always oh. like interested in the journalism side because I was interested in media. 
just yeah. generally I love like media anything media related but um obviously this is like years ago now but it's just funny that you said that it's funny yeah because it's but, not yeah. something that guy gave up on I think you should revisit it I think it should you should definitely revisit it and this entire thing you got going on today is giving journalists <laughs> I love it and so this is going to lead us to is it your question am I oh it's yours it's yours I think it's me. mine um yeah all right so my next question is um how do you hold yourself accountable this is hilarious i literally just told my mom yesterday <laughs> that i believe nyla gonna be a part of the shows because anytime i'm having a show she gonna get involved and so how do i hold myself accountable yes i believe that the holy spirit holds us all accountable so when you have him so we can take credit for the fact oh i'm just you know i i just i just i follow the word of god i just I always live right. That's not mm -hmm. true. Like yeah. we have flesh and it gives us the yeah. propensity to want to sin because when the fall took place in the garden, our mm -hmm. you no know, sin entered into people. It entered into yeah. humankind. And so yeah. we all have the propensity, according to the books of James, the book of James, to be led astray according to our own sin nature. Yeah. Yes. But because we have the Holy Ghost, he is like a, he gives us restraint. So I hold myself accountable to the Holy Spirit. Now, yeah. even with having a Holy Spirit doesn't mean that you always still going to make the right decisions because yeah. you can override in the Holy Ghost. You can say, I don't want to do that. And do yeah. what's you can say, I do want to do this and I'm going to do what's <laughs> I'm gonna do what's wrong instead of yeah. not doing what, <laughs> what's wrong. <laughs> and so I hold myself accountable to the yeah. Holy Spirit within me. And the reason being is because there have been times that I overrode the Holy Ghost and did yeah. what I wanted to do. And I don't like, it's not that I didn't enjoy the sin that I got myself in at the moment, but yeah. I live too righteous. I live mm -hmm. too righteously to make that kind of a fall. And then it's just like, let's say you're skiing, right? Yeah. And you're, you got a flow. You like, you're gliding. It's almost like you, you know, you're zooming, you're doing amazing. And yeah. this is how prosperity works. When you mm -hmm. see businesses that are thriving or ministries or whatever, and they begin to plummet, it's always because of sin. It's almost always because of sin. Yeah. And so mm. you got a good flow going, you're moving forward, you're, you know, doing well. And then this temptation presents itself and me talk about myself like, oh, I want to get myself over to this. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad. Exactly. Oh. Dad, I'm interviewing. <laughs> it's OK. I'm going to call you right back. OK. <laughs> did you hear my dad? Love it. Yeah, I did a little bit. <laughs> I should have asked him a question while he was on the phone. But this is um, live, 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 live. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, so <laughs> I so what I didn't like about it is that once I fell into sin, first of all, it didn't last as long as it took me to get righteous, if that makes sense. So yeah. let's say like a person that has been delivered from drugs and they go through a rehab program, just a natural mm -hmm. example. It mm -hmm. takes them a while to detox their system to get all of that out of their system. And then one relapse, it's like you got to start all the way over. So I didn't like the fact that falling into sin, first of all, it could probably not even be an hour worth of sin pleasure or whatever. Or maybe yeah. even if it is two hours or whatever, it took mm -hmm. me years to get to where I'm at. Yeah. Look, you see this camera moving and all of this? No, <laughs> but it took me years to get to where I'm yeah. at and one bad decision and I plummeted like I yeah. have lost. I'm losing. And, and, and God is so gracious that he'll restore you. But if you've ever, I have been sin sick before I see, I, these mm -hmm. are, you don't hear people talk about sin sick, sin. I never heard that before, you know? Sin sick. Okay. Sin -sick. It's when okay. you have given yourself over to sin. Right. And you feel nauseous. Like your body oh feels nauseous. Yes. Because wow. you're disgusted by the sin that you gave yourself over to. I have been right. okay. where right. I was so disgusted 
by the sin that I gave myself over to that it made me feel as if I wanted to vomit every day right. until I was delivered, until God delivered me. And so because I don't like the aftermath of sin, I try to avoid it. And that's why I hold yeah. myself accountable to the Holy Spirit. Because if, yeah. if the Holy Spirit is saying no, I try my best now that I've been walking with God for some time to go no. If he right. says yes, I try my best to go yes. Because I don't like to feel sin-sick. I don't like yeah. to be doing well and then fall into sin. And it mm -hmm. wasn't even worth it. And now I got to try to build myself back up. And the thing about that is you're playing Russian roulette with your faith and with your life. Because let's just think about Samson. He mm -hmm. failed to Delilah all those many times. Yeah. Um, she tricked him, I believe, three times before the final cutting of his hair. Two yeah. or three times before the final cutting of his hair. And sometimes you think, oh, well, I'm I'm just going to shake myself off like, like, like Samson. Mm. I'm just yeah. going to shake myself off and get back into it and I'll be fine. But yeah. the Bible declares that he knew not that God was not with him. That he didn't even know that the spirit of the Lord had left him. Right. And so... <laughs> I don't ever want to be in a position that I keep on playing with sin and thinking that I got grace that's going to bound and I try to go out and do what I was doing and then yeah. God is not with me. He's completely yeah. abandoned ship. Like he don't want nothing to do with me. Like we have we're we're we're, we're separated. <laughs> and yeah. so that that is yeah. why I hold myself accountable to the Holy Spirit, not to my own accountability, because my own accountability would give myself too much grace to do what I what that's I was doing. Point. That's a good point. I like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Too much grace. Yep. Yeah. I would give myself too much. Oh girl, you know, yeah. it's okay. Look You've at been me. too hard on yourself. Don't worry like you know what I mean? Like Yeah. Don't. And mm. then when we're when we're operating our flesh when it comes down to grace, we compare ourselves to other people. Well, oh, yeah, 100%. Well, at least I'm not. Da, 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 da. Yes. You know I mean? oh, yes. Yeah. At least I'm not doing what they're doing. At least I'm not going as far as they're going. We compare yeah. ourselves to other people. And God is right. not judging you based upon what your sister or brother in Christ is doing. He's judging you based upon what you are doing. And so yeah. that that was a great, great, great question. Mm -hmm. Sister Let me find my phone because sis Nyla oh. wrote when we finally get our studio, because I decree and declare you're going to have one in the UK, I'm going to have one in the States. We're going to come together and do them yes. too, in Jesus' name. We're going to make name. sure we have a daycare play area for the babies so that they don't destroy yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because just this small time of Nyla being here, she have, the, she have moved my lights. She have unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! So plug in my my devices. <laughs> okay, so let's get to my next question for you. Okay. All right. Okay. Have you ever had to? Okay, so I think we talked about the decrease in size of of your crowd. But have you ever had to release? This is a little bit different, not too much different. Have you ever mm -hmm. had to release an old relationship or friendship to focus on the will of God for your life? How was that process? Um. Well, yes, I have had to uh, release uh, an old friendship. Oh, friendship. Yeah, because I just, I, I mean, it's happened a few times, actually, with different people. So um, there were the people that I went to university with. You know how early I was saying I was trying to hold on to people um, mm -hmm. because I had so much history with them and stuff like that. Yeah. But I knew that it's, we were not on the same page. I don't know how mm -hmm. else to say it. Um, and when I say that, I don't mean because I'm not really talking about, how do I say this? I'm not really talking about where they're at or how well they know the Lord or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, I believe that um, you can you can see somebody could exist right now and they don't, they might not know the Lord like that right now, but down the line, they, do you know what I mean? So I'm not even talking about that. Yeah. I'm just saying the type of things that they were doing or how they, it just wasn't, that's not what, the Lord wanted for my life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I knew that, even though I might not be able to 
put it into words or whatever, but I just sent, I knew deep down that like, I can't, we can't carry on being friends. Mm. And I've had that with a couple of people since where I've withdrew and then there's, it's stopped. And then suddenly they, every time they're reaching out, reaching out and I have to ignore it. Mm-hmm. And that's the difficult part. Or maybe I had a conversation with someone and I tried to, you know, um, try to reconnect with them. Mm-hmm. And it just, when I, when I get off the phone to talking to that person, I'm like, there's something like, mm, it doesn't feel. Right in the spirit, imp- in the Holy yeah. Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, I don't, then I'm like, well, I don't want to be, I'm not being, they haven't done anything bad to me. So why do I need to feel that way? And I kind of give it space. And then I think I'll just leave it, withdraw. And then they'll reach back out to me again, multiple times. And I'm like, I oh, know I don't, I can't, I can't answer the phone. I can't call them back. I can't, I just leave it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I've had that as well with, um, more recently with, um, a couple of people. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, that was a great know. way to answer that question because I f- I believe that we do get that nudging within yeah. us. God is telling us, you know, don't talk to this person. And yeah. but sometimes the nudging is like completely contrary to what we're seeing displayed by the person. So that's where the conflict comes in. Because yeah. they may be still being nice, they may be saying yeah. what seems like the right words, but the yeah. Holy Spirit is saying no. So it's yeah. like you can you if you don't love God so much that you're like, I'm just gonna take your word for it, you can be confused, like, but God, they're not doing anything. What did they do? You know, exactly. like I don't see that they've done anything wrong. It's just exactly. like with Rachel, when Jacob had when she stole those idols from her father Laban's house. And mm. And nobody knew it because she was Mm -hmm. still looking beautiful, still smiling, you know, but she had hidden those idols. And Mm -hmm. so unless you have the Holy Spirit, you won't know what someone else is doing privately, especially if you're looking at um, outward appearance instead of asking God to show you the heart. And sometimes I'll be honest with you, sisters, Ryan, this is the truth, truth for real. Sometimes I ask God to show me stuff and he only showed me a glimpse. And it was too much. <laughs> too it much. Was too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was too much. I was like, right. I don't want to see no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It it that he is so he is so wise in his infinite wisdom, knowing how mm. much he can handle. Because exactly. if he was to show us the fullness of the skeletons in the closets you, of the people, oh my gosh. Court. You'd be running. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> Oh yeah. You know how they say, tell me the truth, and they say, you can't handle the truth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is so true. There are certain things that in our finite mind we cannot handle. That's why the Bible says that those who have given themselves over to a reprobate mind, Romans chapter one, it is a yep. shame. This is what Apostle Paul is a shame yeah. to mention <laughs> what they do in darkness. Like, mm-hmm. like we, so when you see a person that has denied the faith and denied the things of God, that's not going after yeah. God and holiness and righteousness, that's a dangerous mm-hmm. person to connect yourself with. Mm-hmm. Even if it seems like they're being nice or whatever, if they, if they were previously walking with God and they walked away or yeah. if they're just completely denying the faith, God may have you to minister to them. Like yeah. ever he would have you to minister to them, but he needs to thank you. Holy spirit. So this is the example, right? Okay. Okay. Let's say we're trying to do evangelism, right? And the whole purpose of me talking to this person is that I want to pull them into the body of Christ because we use that as an excuse. So the whole purpose of you getting connected to this person is to pull them into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light and out of darkness. But this is the problem that many people run into because if you're not strong enough in your faith, meaning you don't have any open doors to the enemy, you don't have weakness in the same area that they have weaknesses then there's a re- let's just imagine a tug of war right mm-hmm. so we tug we tug in there's a tug of exactly. war with the rope. Yeah. I'm tugging yeah. to try to pull you in to the faith if I still got areas of weakness and I've not fully mm-hmm. been delivered from what it is you're battling with it's a better chance that you're going to pull me out of the faith than me pulling right. In into the faith, and even if you don't pull me out of the faith, you may pull me into sin that right. will contradict my faith, and so that's why God has to bring forth the separation. 
because he knows that if this person stays with you because they have such an impact on you and especially if you have made them an idol in your life they'll make you mm -hmm. sin against me right you will sin against me just for them because you value them that much and that's not what he wants for us so many times we say oh i'm just ministering to this person i'm helping this person but you're not being honest about the fact that yeah. there's areas in your flesh that I'd be pleased by your conversation with this person. You only one mm. <laughs> Okay, sisters, right? I think we're in your hand. Oh, is it my question? Okay. Yes. Oh, it's your, okay. it's your question. My question, your question. Sorry. What is one song, one song that ministers to you, um, still ministers to you from the from the time that you first heard it? Oh, a song that ministers to me from the time that I first started walking with God. No, from the time that you first heard the song, like. So it ministered to you then, and it still ministers to you right now. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. that's a challenging one for me because oh, okay. I make music, and I also love music. So, yeah. but there's this one song, um, two. Yeah. Can I say two? At Please. least two? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when I was experiencing hardship, and I had to live in a shelter, I was living in a shelter for eight, eight years of struggle. Yeah. Eight years of struggle. <laughs> living um unhoused and various shelters but this one shelter i felt so um alone i felt so unloved and i felt like i was all by myself and this one song came on the radio i was trying to encourage my my son and my daughter at that time i had richard and alaya and i was trying to encourage them that everything was going to be okay and so um in me trying to encourage them that everything was going to be okay i needed encouragement myself and right. so I began to weep a little bit in the corner. They couldn't see that I was weeping. And then, mm -hmm. I think we had a radio. Yeah. But the radio came on, and this song by Lenny called Because I Love You. And mm -hmm. um, do you have you ever heard this song? No. Okay, so look it up. It's called, it's a it's a song by Lenny. I can't even think of his last name. But it's Because I Love You. And when I like started music. singing that song, it felt as if God was singing to me. It's a, it's like a R and B mm -hmm. song about a man in love with a woman, and okay. it's talking about um, how she basically is moving on with her life, but yeah. he can't get over her because he just loves her so much. And people are telling him to get over her, and he's like, "You never been in love like I've been in love. Like I just love her so much." And when I heard that song, I just felt like God was singing that song to me about his love for me. And it encouraged yeah. me in that moment. It just, the release mm -hmm. of tears that I needed, I got. And then there's another song. And in that song, it's the man comes out, he's like, how well <laughs> remember the times. Okay, so, okay. And, and he has like this very low range of singing. But that song, when I tell you, when I was waiting on a bus stop, when I was trying to get to my locations, that song would come on and I just, I feel myself pressing through. So, yeah. do you have one? Which, which, what's your song? I do actually. Um, one of them is, in particular, is um, Let God Have His Way by PJ, PJ Morton and The World or whatever it is. Yeah, that one in particular. That one, yeah. When I, cool. I like that yeah. i know that song too yeah because it there's this line in it that says um i can't even think something about he oh, i need to I, you know what i'm talking about this song yeah i do i know what song you're talking about and so did that song really? play at it was did it play at a specific time in your life and that's why i kind of like jogged in your memory or what happened it wasn't that long ago to be honest um, really? maybe like yeah within the last year definitely um it's the first time i heard it and um it made it yeah i was crying because it made me like there's there's particular lines in that song that it really made me, yeah wow that's breakthrough yeah. That's breakthrough. Yeah. You got a breakthrough. And that's why when people release this 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 worship music, it's not just um music, it's ministry. And so yeah. your lifestyle matters a lot. God told me that a long time ago that yeah. the power of God is released when you practice what you preach. So right. 
a person may not say as much as someone else or may not say it as well as someone else or sing it as well as someone else but because yeah. their lifestyle is pure and holy then people yeah. get triggered because their yeah. lifestyle is righteous then people get you know the deliverance that they need and so thank yeah. you that was a great question and so this is gonna bring me to my last and final question do you have any goals woo, for the remainder mm -hmm. of the year uh yes <laughs> uh yes um some of which have been uh reached already oh but you said the remainder of the year yeah so the ones that I have left, right? For the rest yes. of the year. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's you my can... answer. Okay. Are you going to share a few with us? Um... I mean, so one of them is, well, one of them I've done already. Um, so that was me applying for something. Um, it was just applying for another role. Mm -hmm. uh, so in oh, a play. Work. So in a play, you're going to be in a play. No, applying for a role, um, a as role? in like a job role. Sorry, another. Oh, job a job. Role. Okay, okay, okay. Another level up kind of thing. Okay. So that one is one of them. Um, another one is just to be honest, it's just continuing like with what I'm already doing. Um. To be honest, like, you know what I mean? And just, yeah, like continuing on with that because it all, it's all going to be part of the bigger picture. I don't want to, yes. I know I probably sound like I'm being vague or whatever, but I'm, I'm doing that. I'm continuing what I'm doing. I'm still doing the podcast stuff. I'm, I'm still writing. I'm still like recording and stuff, tracks and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. Oh wow! So I'm gl I'm glad that you said that. I'm glad that you that you're doing those things. I'm excited to see what's to come for you. Yeah, and obviously, uh, I've written more. So like, I think I've written more stuff. Like in terms of, I haven't published it yet, but I've definitely written more stuff that needs. To so, be. are you going to publish it? What are you waiting on? If I'm being honest, is I don't really. What I don't want to do is just sort of. I don't know how to, I don't know anything about publishing. I don't know anything. I don't want to like. Okay. We're going to get I, on the phone and we're going to get you published because I know a, a little bit about publishing. <laughs> and then I know some people that know a lot. So yeah. let's get you published I, instead of just having these great ideas that just remain in you. Yeah. And so yeah, you can get yeah. to the world. Yeah. I've got stuff that needs to be published, to be honest. But you know what I mean? So it's just, it's just, yeah, this is there. But I know it will be anyway, like, you know what I mean? So. Well, yeah. I'm so excited for you, Sis Raya. I know that you're going to do well. Do you have a song for us? Last time you played a song. And so if oh, you have really? another one, then I do have we would love one. to hear it. Let me, just a little let me. gentle shout out. I graduate from college in December. So yes. I'm excited about that. I walk across like the them. stage next year in May. But my graduation yeah. is in December. Let me go and get my I'm gonna play it for you if that's all right. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, and so thank me. you guys for joining us. Thank you for being here with us from another word from this generation. Um, so this is Raya is our guest from the United Kingdom, and we love her so much. And then we also had a special guest, Sister yeah. Nyla Rose. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're to be in all of our upcoming interviews because Nyla is not, she refused to be left out, and so yeah so sis israel whenever you're ready i am yep just give me one moment okay um, and also guys if you haven't listened to the latest episode on the jesus girl ent podcast yeah. what are you waiting for it, it was a powerful powerful message from a young lady by the name of sis matai she gives her testimony on how her mother and her sister transitioned on to be with the lord in 2019 and 2021 and how she had to bear the brunt of taking on responsibility of her younger siblings as well as her younger nieces and how she's making it through and so i believe that it will encourage anyone who has dealt with hardship and you're trying to find strength the bible tells us that we're overcome by the blood of the lamb 
am in a word of our testimony. So I believe that if you are one of those people that are battling, that this will be helpful for you. A blessing is a blessing is a blessing. Not to myself, but to others. Not to myself, but to others. And you are included. Yes, you are included. And you are included. Yes, you are included. Yeah. Walk in abundant life. Hey. This is a different high. Hey. Walking up on the right, hey. This is a different high, yeah. Walking up on the right, hey. This is a different high, yeah. Walking up on the right, hey. This is a different high, a different high, yeah. A different high, yeah. A different high, yeah. A different high, hey. This is a different high. got this on my phone because i'm gonna use this <laughs> my songs to clean up to my clean up my home to, to exercise i want to hear the other one we need oh, more yeah, okay did you professionally record this or did you just record it on your phone no i recorded it in a uh, studio in the studio okay so yeah. are you going to put it on the um are you going to put it on the airwaves so that it can yeah. be heard yeah, I need to. I'm trying to like. I'm. I need to. I got. I got a collection of stuff that I could. But I don't, again, I don't know how to. I have no idea with stuff like that. I ain't got clue. I don't know how to do all of that. <laughs> to be honest. Okay. Like, so um. Okay. So we'll talk about that offline too. Yeah. I think like, this is really good music. You have your own flow and um, creativity, and I believe a lot of people will love that because it's not like. It's just like a vibe. You don't know how people like a holy vibe. Like a holy vibe. So I want to play this one too. And I really oh, like that. Thank you. Uh, this other one is Taking Steps, of course. Yeah. I'm going to play this one. Let's see if it can open up. The day I took my first step, it was scary. But I can confirm it was a step. Not a half step, maybe a shaky step. But nevertheless, it was a step. And I'm thankful that I took it. I'm trusting him, he who has made all things from the beginning. Beginning, I'm trusting him. There's nothing too hard for him. On my own, it's impossible. I'm trusting him. And today, I took another step, and then again, another step and it wasn't scary this time you know why because i'm not the one who orders them he who created me orders my steps every one of them i don't know why it took so long for me to realize that it's a partnership we're working together in cooperation with each other and i take steps he orders them faith without works is dead and steps that are ordered but not stepped. Does that even make sense? So, as he wakes me up with his breath in my lungs, I'm thankful for a new day as I intentionally take another step. And with every step, it's another yes. Not lip service, but a real yes. Coming from the inside out. A silent shout 
in my bones and in my soul. My trust not being in the step itself, because that would be me relying on myself. He is the one who knows how and when, because he is the one who orders my steps. He is the one who knows how and when. He is the one who establishes things and has been doing so from the beginning. From the very beginning. And I realise that every step is a necessary part of my process. So why would I stop now? I love this so much. You know what I love <laughs> is the fact that it's so much of your art that as you're listening to it, you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, because it's it's, it's 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 from your heart. It's from yeah, yeah. My heart reaches the heart, and I love this as an art. Some people think of music, and they think you have to have this grandiose voice that's like boisterous, and so, you know, but yeah. That's the case when it comes down to artistry and creation yeah. and so i see this as an entire beautiful <laughs> because you got some singing in there a little bit seeming like rap then poor, <laughs> you're like very much um multifaceted and i believe that it's going to um work in your favor very much and so yeah. um this was really really good i cannot <laughs> wait to hear more of your music one place that we can start for sure is uploading on YouTube. And right. even if you just upload the audio, you can create your own audio visual. If you upload yeah. audio and then you can upload yourself on there, you know, with the music in the background so that we can get it out there because you may not be for everyone, but yeah. there's someone that you're for. And mm -hmm. I'm a part of that group that loves music like that. I can definitely hear mm -hmm. myself playing that. And I'm definitely going to play it a lot because I know you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a different, so it's a different facet of who you are. So you already have gone international. And this, mm -hmm. is, we have to be okay with all of those questions that we asked today. We have to be okay with God's perfect timing, with his separating right. the wheat from the tear, with his um, alignment, with his realignment, with him telling us no, because then he can bring, begin to bring together these destiny partnerships, these divine connections that can help us to go to our next level. Yeah. Yes, great, this is right. I have some music I'm working on too. So just. Hey, please share one. You want to hear one? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. yes, please. Have you ever heard any of my music before? I think I have because um, I'm sure you played some on your podcast because I listen to your podcast as well. Do you listen? Um, I love it. Yeah, I okay. do. Okay, well, good. So then you have yeah. an idea of the kind of music that I do. So that's another yeah. way to get your music out. You can put, put it on your podcast. But who was playing yeah. piano on your second song? So that actually was just like an instrumental of, uh, it was an instrumental that I found to use. Okay. Basically, okay. It's not my music or anything. It's obviously the vocals and the lyrics of me, but the instrumental is obviously not me. But yeah. Yeah. So for the music that I have, I have a few more songs that I'm working on, and I don't, I don't say I'm a pianist because I'm not, but I do oh, you play piano. a little bit, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. um, there's this one song that I have called "Where You Are" that I love so much. And the thing about it is, I can hear it in my spirit while I'm around my house, and I'm like, I want to play that. But I'm like, you haven't recorded it. <laughs> oh, it's like oh. if you want to hear it, you actually have to play it so that you can hear it. And so, yeah. I believe what we're going to make a vow to each other, a promise, a promise on today, is that we're a vow to God, but a yes. promise that we're going to move forward. Um, and actually produce the creative works that he's given us. So yeah. before the end of the year, because yeah. we're going to do these as often as the Lord would have us to do these, we'll be able yeah. to show, hey, that song, remember, that song is out. That right. book, remember, that book is out. Oh, and sure. so this is a way that we can hold each other accountable to the things of God yeah. 
and also fulfill our purpose because it was God and purpose that saved me. I talked about it and I believe that purpose saves a lot of people because most of the time when you hear about people unaliving and no longer want to be on earth is because they don't feel as if they have a purpose or they don't fully understand what is my purpose. And so, yeah, definitely. All right. So do you have anything you want to share with the listeners as we prepare to close out? Uh, no, just like, you know, if you want to check out the podcast, feel free. Um, go in deeper with truth on Spotify. Um, yeah. But if you would like to, if you don't, that's fine. But yeah. That's <laughs> you guys that are into, um, and then also encourage, pray for Sister Zaria. She's in the UK. Um, as her music prepares to come forth. You know, a lot of people come from the UK. Their music comes from the UK. Now, guess who sleep? Nyla Rose. Hey, wow. <laughs> she been distressed in this whole time. I was distressed. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep stuff together and she knocking everything over. And now she's sleeping. The interview okay. is closing out. God got a good sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so what I was going to say is that there's a lot of people that come from the UK and their music does really well over here in America. And vice versa, because, you know, um, Tina Turner, her music didn't really start taking off until she went to London. Mm. So, um, she when she was with Ike Turner, they did well together. But when she went solo, yeah. she did not. Um, she didn't do she didn't have a breakthrough in her music until mm -hmm. she crossed over there. But, so, oh, there's something in there that you just said. Sorry. Hmm? I, yeah, I heard what you, I caught that. Yeah, I got it. Oh, that was for you. How I that. Yeah, when you said until. It, yeah, that bit. Yep, yep. And so um, I don't want you to hold back. And then the thing I love about your music, too, you said, like, it's one song you got. I remember you said, I'm saying it with chess. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it with chess. They did not create you, that one. Yes, yes. Oh, and so you see, I remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. So, um, <laughs> when you say your music, you're passionate, and that's, yeah. you're saying the word of God. So, if it's God's will, He's going to take care of it. He's going to make sure every provision is in place for what it is that He's called for you to do. And so, I'm excited. Virtual hug. Hey. <laughs> Excited to see what God is going to do in your life and um, and all of those who you're called to. I'm going to upload this to the Jesus Girl ENT podcast as well. And those two okay. songs that you um, that I just shared, I'm going to put one at the beginning and one at the end. So it'll oh, be cool. up okay. tomorrow. Okay. Cool. And so, okay. yeah. So we're You know what's funny, right? I just mm -hmm. got to say, you know what's funny? Obviously, when I was... I don't like sending my stuff, like, just generally, don't matter who it is, because I don't know, I feel a type of way about it. Mm -hmm. But obviously, when I was playing it on here, you could you could hear it, but you said it was a bit low. I, think I haven't got any. Mm -hmm. I've got no other device to play it on. So obviously, I'm using this, my tablet on here. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, the only other way is to send it to you. Do you know what I mean? But it's not what I wanted to do, but obviously, anyway. We well, got working together. So you're saying like because of the, the error or the um, glitch with the music, me not being able to hear it, you sent it to me and now it's getting ready to go out. That's God, what I mean. Yeah. He, <laughs> I, I reported it, but I just, just anyway. Wow. Oh, wow. See, God, yeah. he doesn't he doesn't make any mistakes. And this is the actually I was nervous to play it. I'm going to tell you the truth, because there have been times that I have tried to um, share a screen and the people that were on Zoom with me, they couldn't hear it. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, remember the last time you sent me um, something to share? I was actually using my phone. I wasn't using a laptop. Yeah. So I know mm -hmm. how to use everything on my phone, but I'm still learning certain things on this laptop. And so when you sent it to me, I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping that it was gonna, you could hear it. That's why I kept asking yeah. you to hear it. But then when I got ready to share it, it's just like God revealed the ram in the bush that said share sound. I'm like, I never saw this before. <laughs> I couldn't funny. Hear and so yeah. your sound you, you were able to hear it and so i'm very excited thank you jesus thank you thank Lord. you jesus 
Thank you for this interview. Thank you for my friend and my sister in Christ. God, I pray that you continue to bless her exceedingly abundantly above all that she could ever ask or think. God, I thank you for her purpose. I thank you for the call on her life. I thank you for the destiny that she has in you. Father, I pray that as her music, as her podcast goes forth, God, that it goes by leaps and bounds. God, that everything that she sacrificed and she gave up and she was willing to walk away for, for, from for you. Father, I'm praying that you give her double. God, in place of those things, God, that you give her joy in place of sorrow. You give her beauty in place of ashes, God, that you give her wealth in place of places that she may have even felt as if she was impoverished, may not have even been financially, even in the area of love or or or, or health, God. I just pray that you just bless her, God, exceedingly abundantly. You have divinely connected us. I pray that you divinely connect her with others and allow her voice to go forth and be able to help many for your for for your for your draw many to your kingdom and we'll be so careful to give you all the glory the honor and the praise god we even thank you for baby nyla rose <laughs> because he kept us going throughout this interview and so father i pray that you bless her exceedingly abundantly above all that she could ever ask or think god i know that you're raising up a generation that is going to truly be submitted to you and so father i pray for her generation i pray that you cover her gifts and her calling and that you continue to bless her even as she's resting <clears throat> God, mm -hmm. it's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. I pray that this interview reaches whoever that you would have it to reach, that it blesses those that you would have, have it to reach, and that you continue to cover them for your glory. God, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We love you. God, we love you. And we thank you for loving us and being so compassionate towards us. God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for wrapping your love and arms of protection around us, for keeping us. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> he is a friend that's sticking closer than any brother. Ooh. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Ooh. <laughs> I love him so much. The love of God uh, reaches everywhere, you know, literally. Yeah. This was good. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was. Thank you so much. And I just pray um, that you have a great day. And you. you know that as you're taking your steps, just like in your song, that he's walking with you. They used to have, I don't know if they have this over there, but they used to have this picture. Um, it's um, it's entitled Footprints in the Sand, but it talks yeah. about, have you seen that? I've heard of it, yeah. I, it sound, when you said it, I was like, yeah, I can recall that. I love that. And so um, that actually may be a, a, sound, a, a, a title for one of your new songs, but <laughs> it, it talks about, I haven't read it in years. But it talks about how when you feel like you're walking by yourself and then you look down and you realize it's only one set of footstep of footprints, but yeah. it was God carrying you like the entire way or two sets and he was walking with you. I haven't read it in so long, so I don't really remember. But the yeah. part that I do remember is that you're not alone. God is with you. He's covering you. And yes. so um, I want you to remember that as you're taking your steps, your destiny steps, that you're not sacrificing in vain. You're not giving up in vain. He's walking with you. And he said, if I be for you, I'm more than the world is against you. Does that mean that God just wants you to be by yourself? No, because even right. he said, it's not good for man to be alone. He knows yeah. that you need companionship and he knows that you need community and a large community at that because Jesus had 12 disciples. One of them was a devil, but the other 11 weren't. If that yeah. were the case that he wanted him to be alone, then he would have just let him do his ministry by himself. And, he, exactly. and most of the time he was, he was teaching the disciples, but most of the time he was, you know, he was doing most of the things. Well, it is a passage of scripture that talks about he was not baptizing, but the disciples were, but so mm -hmm. they were working, but he yeah. couldn't let him do it by himself. If he felt like we did not need to do anything with others. And then he didn't yeah. have to give them that many. He could have just gave them two and then left the others out, but he had 12 
disciples. So he gave him community and he had conversations with them. Like, who yeah. do they say that I am? This is like a dinner conversation. <laughs> like, tell me what they saying out there. Right. Okay, now, who do you say that I am? And so I'm telling you that um, and encouraging myself as I'm encouraging you that as you make your destiny steps, that God is going to bring the right people that are supp supposed to be with you along yeah. your journey. And as he's bringing them around you, they're going to accommodate you. They're going to see the best in you. And so yeah. the only task that we have is not to bring the residue from our past in our mind, assuming mm -hmm. that those who God brings are like those who were in our past season or yeah. that speak to us like our past season or treat right. like our past season. You have to treat every new opportunity with like mm -hmm. a new clean sheet of paper. Like yeah. they don't know you, you don't yeah. know them. Yeah. See the best in them. This is God. You know, you have discernment, so you'll know if it's of God or not. And yeah. so um, those are my final words for the for the group. Um, do you have anything you want to share before I say our closing remarks and then close us out? Uh yeah, I just want to say that um I'm thankful for this like um this session that we had today. Really, really good. And the Holy Spirit led definitely. And yeah, just that, like you said, like, no matter what it looks like or feels like and stuff like that, like, you know, all is well and that's it. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I feel like I'm just going to share this quickly. It's just like a little thing that I think to myself, whatever, can I share it briefly? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I know we're wrapping up, um, but it just says, um, all is well. In the name of Jesus, 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 all is well. In the name of Jesus. All is well, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, all is well. In the name of Jesus, in every area, all is well. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I love that. I love that. Sorry. That is amazing, and you. That's why you yeah, got to yeah. get your your workout. Your at your art is art. And it's beautiful, <laughs> and that's anointed. And um, even though God is the lion, he's also the lion of Judah. He's also the lamb. And so yeah. when you think about prophet Elijah. And that's why you got to really pray for those who have prophetic gifts, because they are very in tune with the things of God. So much so that they can feel disconnected from the things of the world because they're so yeah. much the things of God. It's like they're living in a nonstop matrix for lack of better words. And so mm -hmm. with prophet Elijah, even though he, like he was on a whole different, just think of geniuses like Albert Einstein geniuses. So my mindset is on a trillion and everybody else is like a, a thousand, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so he's on a whole nother playing field than what the world is on. And so that's yeah. why when he performed that miracle and the fire came down from heaven, it's not so much that he was running from Jezebel, but it, it could have very well been that my identity supersedes my ability here in the earth. And so that's why when he had his encounter with God in the cave, only God mm -hmm. could minister to him. I'm coming to your song because it may seem yeah. like I'm walking around the block, but I'm coming there. No, no, no. <laughs> God spoke to him. It says that there was a, a rushing mighty wind, but God was not in the wind. And then there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. And there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. And then a still small voice. It may not have been in that order. Yeah. But then there was a still small voice. And that's when the voice spoke to Elijah and he came forth and God began to minister to him. There are certain things that don't require um, earthquakes and booms and bounds and boom. It can be something as still as all is well. And yeah. it can be something that subtle. Yeah. And it'll be it'll bring peace to some yeah. storm. 
And so, woman of God, go forth, use your gift. Is that one recorded yet? No, it's just, honestly, it's just a song that he, he, I don't know, like, sometimes stuff just comes and I'm just like, I don't know, it just comes it's out. And I'm just, with him, so he's downloading it from heaven. So you got to so, record it. You got to record oh, it. Yeah. And once you record it, you know, let me know. I'll get it out. There's... <laughs> So I have people that reach out to me just because they know I'll play their songs on the podcast. And oh. it's, it's a blessing to me. I don't mind it because these are kingdom people. Some people from the world, they sing. <laughs> but one guy, he sent me um he sent me some music. I said, you I had to ask him, do you know that this is a Christian podcast? <laughs> <laughs> it was so much profanity and stuff in it oh, and i could appreciate the art but this is the thing if you're going to use that kind of language and verbiage and stuff i won't take away from your art unless it gets them like really demonic then i could not play it at yeah. all but i just need you to understand i'm going to be clipping 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. you gonna really truly back in the day they used to call it a radio edit you're gonna truly have yeah, a radio edit <laughs> <laughs> I by the time to... i put it like <laughs> yeah you're gonna be thinking i know i said bleep 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 right it's gonna be <laughs> like, i'm gonna cut it out <laughs> cut it all out <laughs> but, yeah 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 clip it clip it and then i'll present it but so that that was that situation but he didn't send me no more music i thought i said do you know that this is a christian podcast he said okay mm -hmm. well, let me think about it because <laughs> i don't know some people feel like they take it takes away from their art if they're not able to use those words but i have to be true yeah. to god and i just exactly. feel like if we start to involve that it kind of pollutes the pure purity of what he wants to do and so yeah. um, there are people that are kingdom um music people that just yeah. don't they're building they're independent artists so they don't have like a platform or anything yet yeah. or a large platform so they send me their songs and i'll play them on a podcast and it helps for me too because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting ready to release some music as well i have released some of my songs on the podcast. <laughs> i have right. some of my songs on a podcast but there are other songs that i use but now because spotify is changing we're running into um copyright infringement a lot of it mm. so um there was an episode this week just an example i was trying to upload it and i had a yeah. song on there which is not even a very popular song but it's it is someone else's song and i played yeah. like a minute of it and they would not let me upload the, the entire episode yeah. like that <laughs> really funny about yeah because of the copyright copyright infringement so if you all send me your songs then yeah. i can play them and i don't have to worry about spotify like pulling it down right. and that helps you all as well to get your music out there and then it helps me too to not have to deal with the back end of not being able to play the entire episode because the song is on there yeah so, um that's all i have for you guys as we say every single time we open up a jesus girl ENT room you were born on purpose for a purpose god was intentional about your birth however it came about you had to be here for such a time as this because your purpose solves a problem and your purpose releases the promises of god for your life and others why am i like crying today oh my gosh it's so okay. Go into the Lord, like let God have His way. It's a release. <laughs> yes, that's what I talked about. Those levels of breakthrough, and God knows what we need the most. Yeah. And so, um, going to this day, allowing your light to shine so brightly that people may see your great works and glorify your Father that is in heaven. You are beautiful, gorgeous, absolutely stunning to our men. You are handsome and strong and a priest of your home to everyone. You are anointed and appointed for such a time as this and this entire world, not just your state, this entire mm -hmm. world, not just your region. This entire world is a better place because you exist in it. We love you and know that Jesus loves you more. And so this room is going to be closing in five Bye for Azariah Stay On. Three, two, one. See you all next time.